You can kind of see the sparkle. So I saw a show. I actually saw a show twice, and I saw this show a while ago. But I just heard that one of the leads, who I really, really enjoyed watching, is leaving the show, and the tour will continue because I saw the tour. I'm actually not sure if the show is still on Broadway because I'm out of touch. <laughs> but also, I do believe it is on the West End. I know it's recently been on the West End, but I don't know how recently because I haven't been paying attention to that. There's more important things for me to be doing, and if I do pay attention to that, then I want to go see all the shows and all the places, and that's a problem for me because I don't have that kind of money. So I'm going to talk about the show because I enjoyed the show, and I haven't seen other shows recently, and I really intended to talk about this right after I saw it for the first time, and then I saw it again, and then I had life happen to me for like six months, three months, I can't, time? I don't know anymore. But I made some notes. I made some notes, those are some notes. Could you read those notes? I don't know if I can, but we're gonna see. The show that I saw, in case you didn't read the title, was Moulin Rouge. I got a CD and a bag that says Can Can on it. But more on that at another time, if ever. <sighs> the CD was the cast album, in case that was unclear for any reason. But I saw this show twice on lottery. Yeah. I won the lottery once. The other was for my mother's birthday. There we are. I separated that a little bit. But I saw it on tour. I saw it on tour in Los Angeles during its a few months of running at the Pantages. And it is no longer at the Pantages. I believe at this point it's currently in Las Vegas, but I'm not sure. Now, on to the substance of the show. Now, Broadway versus touring companies. I'm not gonna say that Broadway is exclusively better because it isn't always, but there's there's some there's some expectations and some assumptions, some of which there's actually a reasonable reason for thinking that tours can have less appealing sets or production designs. Now this is not always the case, but because they are traveling and packing through um, different size theaters. It might have to be downsized from Broadway or just different from Broadway. Also, the, the cast is traveling, so that can be hard being on, and depending on how long they're staying at each uh, venue, that if, if they're only there for a week and then they're traveling between states or even countries and in, in international shows, that's rough on a person. and especially a person who is then having to perform like them, the, they're doing the thing, singing, tires the voice. I'm getting off track, but in this case, the cast and the set were quite good. Now I say that because I, I take a few personal issues with the set, but it turns out that that wasn't just because it was on tour, it was the same in the Broadway show, but I'll get to that later because that's less important than the cast. The cast was amazing. Now, I believe I'd heard the cast album from Broadway a few times, or maybe not. I know there were some songs that I'd heard because, let's see, that, that came out pre-pandemic, so I've, I've played it. I think that was pre-pandemic. I I'd at least heard a song. That's the, that's the important part. I knew that it existed. I had definitely heard some of the, the main title ones that were going around while the show was uh, opening on Broadway and kind of increasing in popularity. But this cast! Now, sometimes tours have less experienced actors or uh, just tired actors. And I say that because a lot of people who work professionally in the industry and in theaters would choose to do um, other things rather than living the tour life. But luckily this cast was great. This cast was awesome. 
and I don't think I would have liked the show without them. Now that, that might seem obvious, but Colton Ryan was one of those voices where I will be obsessed with I will be obsessed with his voice. I want to Ursula his voice. I j just the de the intricacies and the emotion. I don't even know how to describe it. There's probably some footage of him on YouTube that I may or may not have uh, listened to on repeat, trying to decipher the code of how he does that, because it's it's really good. It's just really good now. The show kind of revolves around his character, Christian, and, excuse me while I, the show kind of revolves around his character, Christian, and while Satine is also a instrumental character, or the plot-wise, the way that she's written, especially for the musical, is not as important. I don't want to say that, but we're definitely following Christian. Courtney Reed, however, was great, and I didn't expect her to sound the way that she did, and she matched Karen Olivo's cast album in a way that I was unprepared for, because I, when I've heard her before as, I think, I'm not sure, Princess Jasmine, and um, probably some other great things that I can't think of off the top of my head, she didn't have this same style pretty much now this might be an acting emotive thing that just like played tricks on my head where she does sound similar to this but it just it 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 was strangely similar to Karen Olivo on the cast album which I'm not mad about sometimes that will that's what that's what works especially when the cast album is so accessible and people can listen to it and love it and then the casting knows how audiences like that so but she also acting wise was her, her, her own person I just don't know how much I love the Satine character more on that later because we're gonna we're gonna talk about the movie a little bit the other Part, important parts of the cast and I say that with no sarcasm even though that sounded sarcastic the ensemble amazing just the I'm trying to think of how to categorize them because you kind of have the like dance on traditional ensemble for a musical where they're in scenes doing lots of things that's where you have your your understudies your swings doing their day-to-day -day and killing it you also in this have the queens, which are sort of supporting roles with featured moments, but they don't... I loved them, but they don't really have any character development. Like, you, you get little pieces of their story here and there, which is nice, but I think I've been reading too many plays. I was looking for a little bit, a little bit more in the scenes. I wasn't super impressed with the scenes, but I think it was more in the writing rather than the performing because they just killed it. And that's also tailored to the audience of not necessarily just like theater goers, hardcore. This is this was for, for anyone, pretty much. I mean, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a family show, but I watched Moulin Rouge the movie as a child, so... <laughs> Maybe it is, but it, it, it's, it's a fun time. It's not the most oof, stretching experience where you're like learning and growing. It's, it's a fun, awesome spectacle of a musical, and that's great. With that in mind, I didn't like the villain. I didn't like the Duke. I, I don't like that character. The actor played him amazingly I wasn't I just wasn't I, I was waiting for it to be over while it was happening and part of that might just be my snobbery of like I already I already know the ending because I've seen the movie the 
the actor though it was it was great sort of I'm gonna go with vaudeville charisma even though that's absolutely an actor but it, like cowboy western something mob meant like old Hollywood I don't know but he was great and Mimi the showgirl sort of a second in command also another another one where I I wish the show was written differently now it, you can tell that it's tailored towards an audience that's just like here for a good time it's a jukebox musical so people are coming in with an idea of what the songs might be or if they even if they don't know they might know some of the songs and the popular versions of them so I get why the performances of certain songs I would have liked to have more variety but they kind of veered towards something that you can expect people will like from the original it it sort of fits I'm not saying that they like were trying to recreate the original songs but they were just trying to keep the popular je ne sais quoi of the of some of the songs. I don't know. It just, it was, I didn't love all of the songs. I did the whole show great as a whole, but I can pick it apart. The concert lighting. Now, because this is a spectacle, they had strobe type thing. They had rolling things going in the audience. They had rolling things. I can describe that better. They had moving lights in the audience, like searchlight style. And that was kind of annoying. It was only in a couple songs, but it was bothersome. And sometimes the lighting would distract from what was actually going on. But uh, that's my personal preference. It's definitely a party for people who would normally be at a concert or just have a short attention span, I guess. It was good, just a bit much there. Now, ooh, the set piece that I don't like. The diamond table shaped like a diamond diamond stools very fitting in diamonds are a best friend or a girl's best friend yet i don't think it was on stage yet and even if it was it didn't really do much oh yeah no of course it was on stage it's also i believe the platform that she like comes down from her trapeze on i didn't like it i just it, the, it left the rest of the space empty in a way that was kind of boring to me though they were still doing a lot with the lights but it was just a bit out of place now the trapeze that's another moment where I can pick it apart because I've been a circus performer in bits and pieces and the the little she just sways on it which is eye-catching but I I understand that it's hard to sing while up there and they wanted to be safe about it as spider-man turn off the dark but it just irked me because i love to see the trapeze up there and i love that scene in the movie and it, it was just such a little like even her just sitting there but like playing more in the audience it's definitely a directing choice that i i wouldn't have made she just leans and I just was not into that. But what can you do? Now the group dances. The group dances were amazing, superior, awesome, just, and I believe there was about three of them. I am unable to think of which ones they were. Also Roxanne and the whole song with Absent. Great. Except again, this is where I just take personal issue with some of the choices made for Satine. She's this fairy figment of Christian's imagination and her whole entrance, exit, dance is just running around the stage and like... <gasps> And you hear her voice on the monitors and like echoey, weird, alcohol-induced. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just boring. They could have they could have added a little bit. She's a figment of his imagination. 
hook her up to some wires, put her back on the trapeze. I don't know, but just do something. <sighs> it's been so long, I had to check everything was still going. Now, <sighs> this has become one of my dream shows. Funny enough, for once, for once, that's not completely true. Let's be fair to myself, but it's not just a dream show in that I'm like, oh, I want to play the lead. I want to be Satine. In this case, I want to be Christian, but since I don't see that happening, I'd love to swing this show because the dance numbers are awesome. The songs are a bop to sing and to just like have going in your head. Like, I don't think I would mind. There's a couple songs that I probably wouldn't love, but you grow to love what you're doing or you maybe shouldn't be doing it I that's rude of me but I don't mean it in a rude way I just mean that like whenever I'm doing a show even if there's a song that I don't like personally I find a way to enjoy it because what else can you do it's great and I got the chance to stage door which is rare for me I met a few of the cast and they were sweethearts now also I wouldn't have recognized how amazing the the owner of the club, the the oh, I forget I'm forgetting his name, but the the chickens and the the Danny Burston character, uh, the actor playing him. When I realized who it was, because he still got his <laughs> still got the mustache on, but I when I registered, I was like, oh wow, that's not who you are as a person. You were amazing. So that was cool and I got the chance to talk to the, uh, the performer for Nini and because I was with my mother my mother made a comment about me playing that role because my mother wants me to play that role and she was very sweet about it but also her performance I loved even though that's one of the characters where because of how the scenes work I just was annoyed about it but her dancing great the the things that she gets to do the moments that she has i love it also when i had been watching like pro the the, the clips that they give to the press from broadway and stuff i thought nini was one of the queens don't believe that's true pretty 99999999 bar nine <laughs> percent sure that that's incorrect and i'm unsure why i thought that except for the fact that one of the queens has a blonde wig and that character has pretty much been blonde because Satine in the production is usually brunette I'm assuming but that's why that choice was made or it's just how it happened but that's probably why that choice was made <sighs> now that we've talked about the the cast and the the audience and <laughs> the dancing as well as the the other bits and pieces i'm gonna kind of wrap up with the, the colorful costumes and eye catching everything was actually not annoying which is kind of shocking also they had a whole pre-show routine where you have people on stage while the audience is in the house and it, it does really help to get that vibe of like, this is a nightclub where people are performing cabaret energy. Love that, that was great. <laughs> and it was also cool to have the audience reacting to the pop music as they were recognizing things and the little, I don't even know what kind of joke to call it, but it was funny. It's not puns, but they would s sort of insert bits of songs and make a joke out of like this is the song we're doing I, <laughs> I'm not explaining that very well but it was great and I do love the movie so going in I was kind of an instant fan and because it has such a wide appeal it really increases the audience for Broadway that or for theater who might come to see a musical because they liked the movie musical and it's so well known and I'm glad that the this was well done though the 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 movie was more well done they're both polished but there's just a certain like 
almost a golden era film feel to the film and this replaced that with sort of a pop mass appeal and I'm not saying that's a bad thing that's a great thing that's cool but it just that's an aspect that I, I didn't realize I enjoyed though I liked the musical the stage musical better it's hard when the movie is also a musical because then like which do I say is what and I don't know I don't know <laughs> and I wish that the tour cast had an album because albums are more accessible and Connor Ryan was amazing also I can't get over how I didn't even re like it c I couldn't c reconnect Courtney R Reed as like Princess Jasmine to this even though like they're both belting it's and it's not even the type of roles it was the vocal quality and emotion like that the character I mean also I guess that's the thing of like your type growing with you as you grow into new roles but it just hit different in a way I wasn't expecting because I also I really like Karen Olivo and also I know that there's been some some I don't even want to call it drama with the Broadway because this like the there has been a lot of theater Broadway drama like I'm thinking Broadway and West End I'm clumping things together and that's not if I remember correctly there wasn't anything crazy huge directly related to this but I just was so good the three amigos having Christian Toulouse and Laroque like just having that dynamic was great and I think that was why it was so upsetting with the, the a lot of the a lot of the female characters it, you you focus on the male characters they have more well-written codified scenes that you can kind of get into like you really you're you're meant to follow Christian's plot so that's obviously gonna happen but the, it's just they're more developed characters which honestly doesn't even bother me as much as I was just disappointed so Yeah. I wrote down Shakespeare dance in my notes. I don't know what that meant. <sighs> Important angle. Angel? Important angel? Can you see? Well, that was pretty much the whole thing, I think. I think I got, got through all the details. I did save my bag. I don't know where I put my playbill. Hopefully I put it away with the rest of my playbills or I would show it to you. I also have the ticket to it somewhere. They did confetti at the end of the show. That was, that's so cute. <laughs> Look at that confetti. Um, I do want to do the show though. That's like, that's a no brainer for me. <laughs> I'm just saying things for no reason. I got, if I didn't say this already, or if I did, a cast album, which always bothers me because the cast album is from the Broadway cast, not the touring cast, and I think that people who don't know theater super well are really, like, expecting it to be the cast that they see, even though that's not how it works and that would be really expensive, and, like, obviously that's, that's not what's gonna happen, but, like, with technology, it kind of could, I wish, that that should be, but I don't see that happening, so, oh well. But, <laughs> I also got the Can Can bag, and they had some cute merch, um, uh, some of it was sold out because I did see one of the, Baz Luhrmann was there at one of the two shows I saw seeing the tour for the first time, and he, like, talked at the end, and it was kind of cool, um, <laughs> to be in the presence of Baz Luhrmann. Uh, but he talked about Elvis a little bit and I was kind of sad because I was like, oh, he, okay, that's, I get it, you're promoting. <laughs> but, oh, I got the Can Can bag because I have a Can Can outfit that I wanted to wear to this that was actually my grandma's costume when she was in Can Can, uh, the musical on Broadway and in Australia. 
that was a touring production. International, I think. I, I'm not sure. That was long before my time. But I wanted to wear the costume to the show, and then I didn't. And it's kind of funny because it's a, like a can-can, the traditional... I don't, I don't know what to describe it. It's, it's a can-can costume, and the the girls in the show wear, wear can-can costumes. This is chaotic, and I think I'm just gonna post it without editing because honestly, what else am I gonna do? I'm never gonna put it up anywhere if I don't. So, character growth, I guess. Thanks for watching. Bye.